Hey guys, this is Jim Stout again with Slam Fun Holdings. Um, just want to educate you a little bit today about something called cost segregation. It's not for everybody. It's for a great tax incentive um, advantage um, for real estate professionals. And I'll go over what a real estate professional really is um, as far as the IRS is concerned. Um, I've been a real estate broker for 20 years. I would have said, hey, I'm a real estate professional. Um, but it has a specific de definition as far as the IRS is concerned if you want to save the kind of money on taxes that you will if you can take advantage of it. So all of our slam fund properties, when we go after a mobile home park, uh, anything commercial, which we do from time to time as well, apartments, um, anything that we're doing in that realm, we want to try to cost, and we will, we do cost segregate it for the LLC, um, which you'd be a member of. Uh, but um, if you personally are not considered a real estate professional, um, you would not be able to take advantage on your portion of that of the K-1 from the LLC. And it's defined um, as someone that owns an in, at least one interest in rental real estate. So if you already own a duplex and you invest in one of our projects, um, the next criteria for you would be um, that you spend at least 50% of your personal time um, dealing in real estate between your property and our property um, that you've invested in. Um, and you have to spend a total of 750 hours a year, which comes out about 14.4 hours a week on average um, during the tax year. Now, you really want to talk to your tax advisor uh, specifically to make sure you qualify as one. Um, but it's not hard to do if you're in the investment real, real estate investment world. I just want you to be clear that if you're brand new to it, uh, first of all, you're probably not an accredited investor, which you wouldn't be able to be in one of our funds. Um, that's a whole other topic as well but an accredited investor is somebody that um, has at least a million dollars in assets not counting their home and or uh, makes at least two hundred thousand dollars a year for the past two years and presumably will in the upcoming uh, years it doesn't sh sh there's no show of a possible decline in that so um, but that's a completely different issue. Um, what I want to discuss in this video is cost segregation. It's a really cool concept. I am not the guru of it by any means. Um, I deal with my wealth and tax strategist and he advises us on what to do. But you basically, when you go to buy a mobile home park or an apartment or any multifamily property, uh, you can do it even with, um, as long as you're a real estate professional, you can do it with duplexes and, and single family as well. But say when you buy a commercial property and you go to do your depreciation for tax purposes, that property is depreciated over 39 years. And any rental property you have is typically 27 and a half years, about 3.636% a year. Um, but cost segregation, what it does is you get, it's kind of like an appraisal, but you, you're going to hire a company that specifically does this. Um, doesn't cost a whole lot of money, about the same as an appraisal. But they come in and do a breakdown on items um, that can capture a lot more depreciation a lot faster. So when you buy, let's say, an apartment building and it, it has 50 units and every unit has full appliances in it. Um, it has some built in uh, cabinets. It has an amenity. Say you've got a or say you add that as one of your amenities, you come in and put in a gym. Um, and you put, and put in some fitness equipment um, in a common area, maybe even install a swimming pool is one of the things we like to do, um, put up a security gate. Um, these are things that are, you know, they come in, they, they break down, say it's a $3 million or $4 million property, say $4 million property. Well, some of that's the land, some of it's the building, and, then that, and that depreciates over the 27 and a half years. But these appliances and carpet and flooring is all different kinds of things that they can cost segregate out that might have a three year, a five year, seven and a half year depreciation. So out of that $4 million property, you might be able to depreciate a million of it a lot faster. And, and that's big um, for, for somebody that's we do a, you know, a short hold on these. We try to hold these properties for maybe three to five years um, and, and up, upgrade them and get the rents up and, and make the improvements we need make it a lot more cash flow positive. And if we don't hold on to it, we, pass, we, we sell it, we want to have depreciated almost everything in there we possibly could have for tax purposes. So, um, you know, typically, well, cost segregation, I think it typically actually is most of your items are going to be five, seven and 15 year, but it, it does beat, um, it does beat that, that 27 and a half year breakdown on it. 
Um, so one of the things you want to do is, is when you're trying to acquire a property or what I'm looking for for slam fund, we try to acquire a property is something that does have enough space to add some of these amenities that will inevitably increase the rents. Um, you know, we want to buy, I don't, I don't like buying properties that are in too bad a condition to where you're counting on the fact you're going to spend a, you're going to spend a lot of money and getting it back in shape. Um, in order to get the rents up. What I want to do is add amenities that people would make them want to live there. Um, so, you know, we've, we've, we've added, um, at, at a couple of apartment buildings, we've been able to go in and, and ha have enough space in, in a common area that we could create a fitness center. Uh, we, in one of the properties, we actually put in some Amazon, because uh, they were all exterior entry doors um, to the apartments. So uh, we put in a, a uh, Amazon uh, locker area for them to be able to get packages delivered to. Um, and, but, you know, so the cost that goes into that is something that could be broken down in a cost segregation, adding a swimming pool or a common area. So we look for properties that have, a you know, at least enough space. I know some of these mobile home parks, they've got, you know, 40 units on a four acre piece of land. <laughs> How they wedge them in there with a shoehorn, I don't really know. Um, no, I see it all the time. But we, we try to leave a little bit more lot space on our lots if we're developing a mobile home park. Um, but we also do always try to put in uh, some form of amenity. Um, so that's where I personally see rents going up. If I can provide you a swimming pool and a fitness center and put up a security gate, um, you know, those are things that you didn't have before and that most apartments and mobile home parks don't have out there. So that just gives people more reason to want to live in your community. Therefore, should justify some, some rent increases. Um, and I, I typically get pretty aggressive on my rental increases um, and kind of want to scare a few people off so that we can get in and make improvements in the units and, and, and go ahead and bite, take the bite and hit up front and just get it done and get our rents up as quickly as possible. Uh, sometimes you can be a little over aggressive and have some really high vacancies, but so far we've been pretty fortunate. Um, but again, this is our, our emphasis on this particular video was cost segregation. So if you kind of pick up on my vibe of what's going on there, um, you definitely want to hire a professional to do it uh, because you're going to have to have something to back it up to the tax man. Um, your accountant's not going to want to just throw out stuff that you said it has. So they're going to go in there and tell you what, you know, what if it's, I think we said 40 units. If we say we had 40 units, um, you know, what is the value of 40 refrigerators and 40 dishwashers and 40 ranges, um, the flooring and 40 units, um, you know, if you've put in window finishings and, you know, um, different things like that. So, um, and then those common area additions that we were talking about doing things that weren't necessarily part of the actual structure, um, especially if they weren't there before. Anything you've added um, when you first acquire the property can usually be depreciated a whole lot faster than 27 and a half years or for sure 39 years. My accountant had a story it was kind of hilarious. When he first explained cost segregation to me a couple of years ago, he said a good friend of his <clears throat> had bought a commercial warehouse and um, when it came for tax time that at the end of the year, he wanted to know what all he could cost segregate. And he, he said he had asked him um, to tell him up front, you know, before he bought the property, he would do a cost segregation for him. But the guy didn't do it. He bought this warehouse. And if you've ever seen most warehouses have a bathroom and one small office uh, for the warehouse supervisor. Um, and that's about it. And that, this one didn't even have that. So he ended up uh, buying about a $2 million warehouse and was only able to cost segregate out the roll-up door. There was one roll-up door to the warehouse. And so he, there was nothing in there <laughs> to break apart. So you got to understand that it's the extra fixtures and things um, that, that aren't typical in a, in a building. You know, the walls, the floor, the roof, and the dirt are, are the what you overall purchased and that's what's being depreciated over long term short term stuff is as those extra things appliances flooring different things like that so anyway i know this is kind of a quick little video but i hope that was helpful for you if you like what you're learning here on slam fun um, i'd appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe if you're watching this on youtube um, give us a like for sure um, if you're on our website slamfun.com you already know a lot about us and you're probably watching this through the video log or the vlog um, and um you can check out Slam Fund anytime you want. Take a look at some of our upcoming investment opportunities. And that's it. I believe the next um, in, installment we're going to have is actually some infill ideas on mobile home parks and how to get your, your profits up in your mobile home park. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great one.